right there, it's probably just going to be a quick, simple video today, this one, or quicker anyway. We'll see as we go along. I'm taking a look at some Bluetooth headphones. These are headphones that have been suggested to me as something I should take a look at many times over the years, and I've finally got some in. They're meters. These are headphones with a, a VU meter in them. Yeah, kind of pointless and gimmicky, I know, but a lot of people suggested I should look at these, so I am doing. However, in the past, when I thought about buying them, they were very expensive. These ones I did all right with, but it was earlier on in the year when I bought them. Let me just tell you, if I look on Amazon today, 310 quid in the UK. I mean, you can get them 250 pounds elsewhere, but you know, it's expensive, isn't it, for a set of Bluetooth headphones from a kind of off-brand in a way. Uh, $217 in the USA on Amazon today. But earlier in the year, when I bought these, $108 in the US. Over in the UK, they were still way too expensive. So what I did, I took advantage of importing from Amazon US to the UK. Cost me a total of £111. And today on Amazon, they would be 310 quid. Definitely not worth 310 Maybe worth 111 One of the things that's put me off them when I've seen them in the past, though, even other than the price, has been they look really chunky. So, I mean, they look like they come out a long way. They're very careful on all the pictures, or most of the pictures, to sort of shoot them side on. But if you were to put your head the other way around, it might look like you've got a couple of cans of beans on your head. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, though, I was trying to look back as to when I first heard about these, and it turns out there was a chap in 2016, almost six years ago to the day that you'll be watching this, Jean-Philippe, he emailed me to say he'd stumbled across these and he thought I might be interested in taking a look at them. Now, back then they were wired. These are Bluetooth, but it was the same idea, like a wired headphones with a you know, VU meter in them. Now, I looked on Amazon as well, just to see when they first started advertising them or, or selling them. Back in April 17, they appeared there, but Amazon, you can, you can always rely on the questions there to give you a, a bit of a chuckle. I don't know if this is deliberately stupid, but here's the question. Is it possible for the headphone user to see the VU meter whilst listening? Well, unless you've got eyes like a gecko, and then even then I'm not sure it'd be possible. I mean, <laughs> who thinks they can see their ears? I just... I'm, maybe it was just a joke, but I don't know. People were answering them and saying you could use mirrors and stuff. Yeah, that does, though move me into I can't speak move me into the serious point of there's kind of little point in having VU meters on your ears I know it's a novelty and all the rest of it but everyone else is seeing them you're not so why bother well I don't know I've got them now we'll open them up the reason I didn't review them earlier on when I got them back in March was because I went deaf in one ear for quite a few months and whilst it's kind of returned it's not brilliant uh, but still I can hear in stereo at the moment so now seems to be a suitable time to test them out but don't expect some kind of audio file review from an expert saying oh the mid's cut off above certain frequency and all that now somebody else can do all that I'll just give you my kind of review and you know how it works with me it either sounds good or it sounds bad and if it sounds bad I'll let you know what sounds bad there you go simple let's open it up and have a look I'll just show you what I mean about the flattering pictures. You see, it looks all right there, doesn't it? And this one on the side, that looks fine as well. But look at this one on the back. That looks a bit chunky, doesn't it? I mean, it goes all the way from there to there. That's going to look a bit odd, I think, on the head. But we'll find out in a minute. Now, this Bluetooth model called the Connect, it's been on the market for a couple of years by this point. So it's not the latest specs. But then again, it's not bad either. As far as battery life goes, we've got 16 hours out of this. I've got some bows recently. Those will do 24 hours now. So things have improved a little bit with the kind of low energy Bluetooth stuff. But we'll just go on and have a look down the specs on the side here quickly. Oh good, grey on grey, especially easy to read through cellophane as well. But if you just want to have a look through those specs, pause, read through them now. The only one I'm going to point out that's interesting to me here is Aptex HD. Right, well on the left here, it tells me what's in the box. So we get the headphones, a USB charging cable, USB to jack listening cable, a stereo cable, three and a half mil plugs on the end, carrying case, warranty card, user manual sticker, and cleaning cloth. Okay, well, here's what was inside the box, and there's just two cables there. Remember, it mentioned we were going to get three. USB to jack listening cable. Or whatever that was, it's not here. Okay, well, let's get on to the main event, and that is a chunky carrying case. Wow. These things are going to be big, aren't they? Here we go. <laughs> Look at those. Uh, they're, they're comical in a way. 
Wow, just so chunky. I mean, you've got, basically you've got your normal headphones and then this bit stuck on the end is just your VU meter. And it's just taking the whole thing wider. Ah, oh, hold on, these have got something on the top. Let's just take that off. Okay, so here's something that gives away the fact that this is not a 2022 product. We've got a micro USB charging port on there. Let's look around the other buttons. So we've got the Bluetooth on off, noise reduction, just a VU meter on that side, but this side we've got the touch controls. Ah, they're not touch controls, they're actually proper clicky buttons, which I much prefer because when you're reaching up to your ear, it's easier to figure out where your finger is if you just move across the sense a bit and do that without activating anything. That's good. Let's see what those buttons can do. Obviously, at the moment, we can see play, pause, skip forward and back, but I think these are also volume as well. Yeah, this tells me that it's a short press if you want to adjust the volume and a long press if you want to skip forward or back a track. So that would mean you'd have to tap the button like you were playing hypersports to move the volume up or down. And then if we were to hold down the play pause button, that will enter the pairing mode. It says here that it comes fully charged, which again indicates the age, because I don't think you could do that nowadays. I think you're only allowed to charge things halfway if you're transporting them, if they've got a battery built in. But uh, let's have a go. Let's see if it's got any power in it. This might have been sat in a box for a couple of years. Yeah, as I suspected, it's as dead as a dodo, so I'm going to have to charge it up. I'll just mention a couple of things about the overall fit and finish and build quality, though, before I do that. I don't like these switches here. They feel very vague and plasticky and likely to fail. Yeah, unpleasant. I like having proper switches, but I'd prefer quality ones. Those are just plastic on the top there, and it's, yeah, not good. In fact, quite a bit of plastic in here, in bits that you might think are metal. All this section here, that's plastic. That's plastic around there as well. We've got a metal ring around the outside, and this is metal going up to here, as is the part around there and that. These holes that you see, one either side, those are the indicator LEDs for these things. So if you were to switch that on, then you should be getting an LED in there, of course, once the power's on, but the power LED doesn't come on either. So definitely needs charging up. Now, hold on, I've just had an idea. There's something I want to test whilst it's got no power in it. I want to see if these things can operate without any charge. When I first saw that original one, the non-Bluetooth model that had a, a wire, I wondered if it needed separate power for these displays. Well, we'll find out with this one if it can operate without. So I've got the headphone cable here. I've got to say, this isn't nice. This is, it almost feels like it's perished in a way. It's, I mean, it's holding its position. It's a rubbery thing. It's ugh, unpleasant though, definitely. Anyway, we've got our inline microphone there with a switch on it. So we plug our headphones into that socket there. And I'll plug the other end of this into my Walkman. We'll just play some music on it. Not a lot happening. No. You can see the move around if I shake the headphones like that. But uh, yeah, I've got maximum volume now on this Walkman. I wonder if I can hear anything through them. I should be able to, shouldn't I? No, that's weird. Absolutely nothing at all coming through there. I've just noticed another negative. Well, two. This is too short for one thing. But never mind that. Plugging it in. Look, I've got the headphone plug plugged in. I can't get that in at the same time because the, the socket is underneath it. So you need to unplug them to charge them up. Yeah, I know it's not a big deal, but I mean, come on, how much thought did that take just to put those things in a different position? But anyway, now it should be charging up. Yeah, we've got a red light. Right, I'm a bit confused now. I just read the manual and it says that they can be used even if you don't have them charged with both switches off, just plug in the supply cable and away you go. So I thought, oh, all right then. Maybe I did something wrong, so I plugged it in and it's working now. Now, I'm sure I had both switches in the off position, but it doesn't matter if I turn them on, it still carries on working. Maybe just that one second or so of me plugging in the charger was enough to sort of spark it into life or something anyway it's working now we've got it plugged in got the music coming through and you can see we've got the vu meter showing on the side there on both of them and this is with both switches in the off positions i notice if you turn this one on the display lights up on both sides same goes for the bluetooth as well so if you've got it powered on those are backlit 
but I'll turn it off for the moment. So yeah, it's all sort of working. Well, let's, let's put it on my head, have a listen, see what I think of the quality. Okay, well, very early first impressions. They sound fine. I think they might be a bit heavy on the bass, perhaps a bit closed in sounding. I do need to do more tests though. I need to listen to some more music and do some comparisons with my other headphones. But as it is, I haven't noticed any major problems as far as the sound goes, but it's hard for me to concentrate on the audio because they're just so flipping uncomfortable. Wow, these things are like a torture device. They're crushing inwards like this. You can see the, the kind of angle that they want to go to. Now, I've got a big, stupid melon head, which isn't great for anything like this, but even, I mean, if you just try and put them straight on a head there, that, that's quite a lot of pressure I'm exerting to get them out to that position. They really want to crush inwards. Now, of course, you could adjust them for the height of your head, but that's not the issue because that's not making them any wider. It's this bit here. Wow, that is really pushing inwards, and I suppose you could bend it a bit, perhaps, just to alleviate some of that pressure but at the moment that is a big problem all right well i'm just going to charge them up as well because i want to listen over bluetooth later i'm still not sure whether it's properly charged up so let me take that out of there brilliant idea and charge them up and then i'll do some more listening later on but while it's charging i just want to mention there's something i've seen in the manual here that might be a little bit revisionist but it does indicate that there might be a use for these displays on the ears rather than just showing off there is a purpose behind them it says the vu meter on the left and right ears of the headphones are a line level signal indicator designed to make others around aware of how loud your music is this could be seen as a safety feature for concerned parents and guardians it goes on to talking about how listening to loud music for a prolonged periods can cause hearing loss and then it shows here on the display whereabouts you should be listening and if you're in the red bit that's too loud so if you are a concerned parent or guardian you can keep your eyes on your ears of your children and check that the needle's not going up to that top bit there Okay, it's time for some listening tests. I'm going to start off wired on this round and we're going to compare the meters against the Sony WH-1000XM3 and the new Bose QuietComfort SE. Well, that was an utterly pointless thing to do because they all sounded fine. You can see why I don't review headphones. My hearing just mustn't be good enough for it because they all sounded all right. I didn't notice any problems with any of them. If I had to kind of get all picky, and I don't know if this is my imagination or not, I'd say that I prefer the Sony a little bit, seem a bit kind of warmer, a little bit less harsh. These are a, a tiny bit sibilant -y, maybe harsh in some of the vocals, uh, but I'd put the bows perhaps third place because you have to really turn the volume up to a lot higher on the output of the device, and they just sounded just perhaps a little bit closed in or something but you know what on a different day i'd get a different opinion on these and if you ask someone else they'd have a different opinion none of them are twice as bad as each other or twice as good they're all all right uh, let's try it on bluetooth now though we'll see if we notice any difference at all on bluetooth i've kind of got a feeling now that i probably won't do but we'll find out let's start with the meters Okay, now I don't know if this is down to the Bluetooth or if I'm just getting more familiar with the differences between them, but I'd say the Sony is definitely warmer. This one's somewhere in the middle. The bows are a little bit thinner, perhaps slightly metallic sounding even. I prefer listening to the music on the Sonys above all, but these put up a good fight as well. As far as noise cancellation goes though, completely different. I don't know if it's even working properly on this. I don't know if it's faulty. The number of times I review things and people say, oh, yours is faulty. Maybe this one actually is because when I turn on the noise cancellation, all I'm getting is a little bit of a kind of buzz sound uh, layered under the audio and it doesn't really seem to be doing anything much at all as far as the noise being cancelled. It makes, just makes the music a bit thinner sounding as well. Uh, the bass seems to disappear. So, um, yeah, noise cancellation, not working. So comparing these two, uh, I was testing this by putting my iPad here, playing a podcast in the background, 
the Sony's don't have as good a noise cancelling as the Bose. There's not an awful lot in it, but I could put the volume up a couple more notches and still not hear it on the Bose, but it's not night and day again. It's not a massive difference. And that's the whole thing with these. You'd be happy with any of them as far as the sound quality goes. That's not an issue. It's more to do with the build quality and the comfort. And as far as that goes, well, I always find Bose the most comfortable of all. The Sony's are fine as well. These, no, couldn't wear those. Now, just for the sake of completeness, I should mention there is an app. It's available for iOS or Android. And once connected up with your headphones, it should allow you to adjust the equalization and the color and intensity of the VU meter backlight. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. Even though my phone is connected up via Bluetooth, when I go into the app, the app doesn't recognize the phone's connected. It really isn't of a concern to me, though. I wasn't planning on using any of these features. In fact, in the past, whenever I've installed headphone apps on my phone, I tend to forget I've got them, and I just use the headphones with the stock settings. Right, finally, let's do the fashion show. So I'm going to start off with something normal. Got the Sony's here. There you go. Don't I look cool? Like Princess Leia. Right, OK, first one. We'll keep things normal again on the, with the bows. I'm sure these look much the same as the Sony. It's a little bit smaller, I think. Uh, yep. All right. Got the idea. Are you ready for the uh, <laughs> for the main event? Here we go. It's hard to see the left and right on these. Uh, that is a problem. It's only etched in the plastic there, black on black. But here we go. What do you think of that? Is this what you want to look like when you're walking around? I mean, maybe it is. I'll say as far as uh, noise cancellation goes, we mentioned the electronic stuff is something not right. But as far as the ear cups, they're doing a good job because it's just squashing my head so much. I am getting used to the discomfort a little bit. I don't know if I could wear them for a long amount of time, though. I really do feel like I'm kind of... I'm underwater with those. Yeah, it's that kind of pressure thing. Let me just go back to these again, because I didn't feel like that. No, you see, those just feel like... I, th I could wear those all day, I think. And then finally back to the Sony's. Yeah, again, those are all right. Mm. I mean, these are... They're all sort of styled in a similar way with the ear cup that goes all the way around the ear. But with these being rounded, they, they're more pushing against it. It's a different kind of style of thing yeah yeah it's definitely pushing my ears that and also my glasses are moving as well so yeah um that was that was the meters well people wanted me to look at them i've looked at them what do i think of them yeah not great not really my cup of tea i don't think yeah i do like vu meters but i, I like to look at them I don't, I don't want to carry around for other people to look at i wouldn't recommend the meters just because of the cost of them and the noise reduction, if that is the noise reduction working, is, is absolute garbage. As far as these two go, I mean, my, my Sony's are a few years old now. I mean, that's the thing. They've upgraded these a couple of times. Why bother? They sound fine. The Bose, the um, QuietComfort SE, I believe, is the QC45 just rebranded. Because when I connect it up to my phone, it, it thinks it's a QC45. So again, that's like just a last year's model. But yeah, you go and get yourself any of these, get them in a sale or something, get last year's model. You'll be just as happy as you are with this year's. So yeah, that's my advice. Don't spend too much on your headphones because they're all all right. Um, there you go. That's not a proper tech review, is it? But that's, that's it for this one. That's all I've got to say. Uh, as always, thanks for watching.